Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I really appreciate your time. Uh, first of all, can we start off by having you tell me a little bit about yourselves and your journey through game design? Okay. Uh, my name is Ben Thompson. I'm the art director for Hearthstone. Um, I've been on the team for a number of years at this point since shipping and uh, worked on any number of different things from primarily the art but also working uh, with the design team as it helps you know, to flesh out sets through concept and figure out vibe and, and story and stuff like that in many cases. Um, now my largest contribution is typically in the form of the set logos. <laughs> Excellent. And they're great logos. Well, thank you. <laughs> Spends his whole day doing it. Uh, I'm Patrick Nagel. Uh, I started on Hearthstone about two and a half years ago, uh, uh, primarily for Tavern Brawls. Um, but since then, I'm now the lead live, live content designer. So we do Tavern Brawls. We do what we call live content, which is um, things like uh, holidays, like the Hollows End um, event that's happening right now. Uh, a lot of the content that we kind of put in between expansions. I also work on Fireside Gathering. Excellent, excellent. Um, and can you talk to me a little bit about your background in card games in general? Mm. Um, well, many of us at Blizzard can, can claim the same past in that we've played a ton of card games. We're a huge fan of them. Uh, it really explains a lot of the origins of the game of Hearthstone and where that comes from. It's pure passion like any of the other games we make. Um, I've been involved previously with other card games as well, so there's a, a lot of passion from the art side of things and creating art for them. Um, Hearthstone was a really rare opportunity in the case of not just doing art that appears on the cards per se, which there have been a couple, but really what is the art for the overall game as a whole. Everything from user interface to you know, what is the conceit that we, we've devised for the user interface for the, you know, the board, the box, or the box and the boards and things like that. Um, it's really a, a fun as I said, opportunity to, to revisit World of Warcraft through the lens of what Hearthstone is and will become. So uh, for me, card games have been mostly amateur. You know, I loved them since I you know was in my 20s. Um, I'm slightly older than my 20s now. Uh, I've been at Blizzard for a long time. I've, I've actually worked on uh, a lot of different games at Blizzard. Um, so Hearthstone is, is the, the team I'm, I'm on now, but um, I kind of... Uh, what, what really excites me about working on Hearthstone, although I haven't actually made card games prior to Hearthstone, um, I'm able to kind of use Hearthstone as a card game, or the card game of Hearthstone, um, and apply it to uh, different different scenarios. Like like Tavern Brawl is the Hearthstone card game, but we add a very strange rule set. And like, mm -hmm. You play Hearthstone with this very strange rule set. Um, uh, also, live content is the same way. We're like, okay, it's a card game, but how do we apply, say, Hallow's End to that thing? Right. Uh, so that's that's kind of a lot of my job, kind of use the, the cards of Hearthstone and see where we can take them. Excellent. Um, speaking of kind of the weird twist on uh, Hearthstone compared to other card games, um, Hearthstone is kind of unique in its ability to uh, tap into various RNG mechanics through things like Discover, things like Evolve. Um, uh, what is that process like, balancing these these really interesting new mechanics um, with the built-in RNG of card draw and, and uh, shuffling decks and, and whatnot? That would be a little harder for either of us to answer, being that we're not on the design team Fair dealing enough. with the balance itself. Um, I do know and can speak to the fact that we believe that there is a place for something like randomness in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. uh, not for the sake of it, per se, but rather the idea that that is where skill can truly be tested. Whether it be in you and your opponent simultaneously, when I say that, and what that means is you know, the skill of a random card pulled and your ability to play it sooner or later, depending on what the rest of your hand possesses, what you know your deck to possess, but also in the way you react to it and the way if your opponent, you know, plays something that plays to the, the more random side of things, what can your response be? And your skill is really being tested now and your responsiveness to something that you didn't see coming or expect. Uh, both of those things are super valid when it comes to randomness determining and really helping to define the skill of either or both players. I think uh, the, the discover mechanic is is a, a very clear case of that as well. So, you know, you have these three random cards, but you have to decide which one. So that is where, you know, your your skill in uh, like looking at your situation and picking the very best random card uh, comes into play. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, having a basis in art design, I want to talk to you a little bit about the aesthetic. Uh, now, Warcraft, in general, has this really interesting history of being both um, very detailed design, but also very exaggerated, cartoonish design. Um, what is kind of the rhyme or reason with the art design in Hearthstone in balancing the two kind of sides of that coin? Sure. 
Um, well, certainly initially, as we were trying to find out what is the style of Hearthstone, WoW was the starting block. Uh, we knew that it had to be interpretive of that world and not creating a new world from it so that you didn't recognize between the two. Um, also being that it was simultaneously a game that we intend to and intended to at the time even be a game for everyone, we really wanted to play to the art in that mindset. And what I mean is playing to something that was a little bit more simplified, it was a big bigger and chunkier shapes than you run into in even WoW, possibly. Some of it might be more indicative of some of the building types you'd see in something like, say, Warcraft 3 or Warcraft 2, mm -hmm. back when it, was, it, it is even more kind of charming and fun and, and tongue-in-cheek than where World of Warcraft has taken it, which is awesome in the form of the epic and the really, you know, the, the heavy storylines and the, the darker side of things, which has been super, super cool for them. We had a feeling early on and really acted on that feeling of wanting the world of Hearthstone to be not epic, but epically charming. Mm -hmm. And the art followed suit. So as we've done that, you know, the color palettes become a little bit more simplified, but they're still very complex in terms of where we're assigning them and how those get you know, follow through. They're very class-based. When you're on the Stormwind board, for instance, the very first board created for the game, it feels like Stormwind, not because that specific tavern in the top right corner exists in the game, but rather it's got the blue shingles, it's got the tutoring, it's got the things that you've come to know Stormwind to be. And certainly that's not a, a one to one example of the chapel in the top left or the right. cathedral. Right. But you see it as that because you've walked past that thing so many times, it doesn't have to have every turret or parapet to it to really feel like, okay, that's the cathedral, I know where I'm at. It's very simple to establish those things. Excellent. Anything to add? Wow, Ben's really good. <laughs> I like that. Excellent. Uh, um, so just to play off uh, uh, of that a little bit more, um, you kind of speak to the familiarity of it. With the uh, the Hearthstone classes, we have like the nine original classes from World of Warcraft. Um, how do you go about designing, I mean, we're talking about the, the card effects and what have you to kind of elicit that um, aesthetic response to, to align properly with those classes? And, you know, and, and what goes into that as sets develop and as you develop more class cards for those classes? Uh, well, Pat came to us actually from World of Warcraft, so there's a lot of experience there with what Warcraft did with them and, and where we've taken them. So. Um, uh, um, I mean, I can definitely speak to the idea that they, they do have to be class-based, right? Mm -hmm. You have to always know, are you looking at a priest spell, are you looking at a warlock spell, are you looking at you know, a warrior? So it a little bit back to the palletization or the colors that we used in those things. Mm -hmm. If you look at priest, we definitely look to WoW first rather than make a spell up right off the, off the cuff. Divine shield looks like divine shield in WoW, right? right? Like when you get a bubble up on your minion, <laughs> You know, it's it's a bubble up that you're very familiar with as having seen it from WoW itself. So keeping things familiar, you know, keeping <laughs> things, you know, something where we don't want to reinvent the language that we're using for anything, starting with the art, but even into the design side of things as well. They have to be very communicative. When something is frozen on the board and the ice comes into play, it's like, okay, that thing's frozen. I probably can't interact with it. Nope, can't interact with it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very clear to the player at a glance what's going on rather than having to do a lot of deciphering. Gotcha. And uh, what does fan feedback look like as, as far as um, art design, effects, all these different things? Clearly you, you stated that you want to communicate definitely what you can and can't do with something when it's been hit by an effect. Um, but you know, does fan feedback kind of factor into that design going forward or how you may adjust certain effects uh, here and there? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it has for sure. Uh, we've definitely... We've gotten a lot of feedback from, wow, this feels super familiar. I, I came to this game from World of Warcraft, and I feel very you know similar effects going off. I see a lot of similar palettes. I see a lot of shapes that I'm very familiar with. Simultaneously, we've had even more people coming to Hearthstone with no knowledge of World of Warcraft whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there doesn't seem to be a, any loss in terms of experience there. Uh, they're equally excited and equally... Um, you know, really inspired by the game itself, if, if for totally different reasons. <laughs> um, making sure that we never play too much to one or the other audience, I think is an important precept that we want to uphold on the game. And what I mean by that is like, the inside jokes can exist. Uh, you know, the fact that playing Malfurion elicits the hello brother, you know, from Illidan mm -hmm. is cool. If you play World of Warcraft and you get it, but if you don't and the Hearthstone's your first game, it's like, oh, okay, wonder why I said that. It's, it's kind of cool. It doesn't break my experience. But if it inspires me to look that up and realize, oh my gosh, that's super cool. I love that they did that. 
then that's that's a better story still. So things like that. And a lot of the cards too, you know, if you knew nothing about World of Warcraft, you know, a dragon whelp feels like a dragon whelp, you know. But if you have played it, then you, you remember, like, oh, when I was in Red Ridge, that's what I fought, you know, when I was level, you know, 17 or whatever. Yeah. Um, it kind of, uh, what Ben is saying, you know, we want to make it so that, you know, you don't need to know any of this stuff, but it will, it will, you'll get a deeper understanding or a deeper appreciation for um, Hearthstone, you know, if, the more you know about World of Warcraft. Excellent. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the uh, cinematic that was recently released. Um, so it was very different from Just anything we're... the animated we're, short. Yeah, the yeah. animated short for, for Hearthstone that uh, is very, very different than anything we've ever really experienced from Blizzard before. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about the process of making that, uh, what the feedback's been like, and what you'd like to do going forward with similar projects? Hearth and Home was something that was very special to us. We worked on it for some time with the cinematic team, um, weekly in many cases, looking at everything as it came from storyboards. The character creation was something we spent a lot of time on. Uh, there's a number of different reasons why this is, is very important to us as a project. Um, none you know, less than, or none more than, I should say, uh, the idea that this cinematic really focuses on, or I should just say animated short, because it's not really even promoting one specific you know, production piece of the game but rather the idea that what is the world of Azeroth through the eyes of a Hearthstone player. We've always had the conceit that Hearthstone is a game played in the world of Warcraft, in Azeroth, by the denizens of Azeroth. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we actually got to see them in kind and really start to ascribe names, races, faces, you know, to these people. Mm -hmm. And the idea that there are people in Azeroth as excited as we are about each set that releases, or each card, or each meta, or each deck type, is kind of a cool idea. It's a cool mm -hmm. fantasy. Um, it also will carry forward into future ones, which we are planning to do uh, a series of smaller. They'll be shorter than the initial one for sure, but no less interesting in that we get to know these characters on an individual basis and understand uh, their their ideas and their thoughts about the game through their eyes. Um, it's stories we're really looking forward to telling. It's stories that we think that players will start to see a little bit of themselves in and their friends in and their experiences through. Excellent. Uh, so one of the uh, what I really like about the short is that it, it really speaks to one of the core narratives of Hearthstone in that you know this is this game that almost anyone in Azeroth you know plays after a long day of you know either adventuring or fighting adventures you know a place where they can come and and play this thing and it doesn't matter honestly faction isn't as important and you know you are in this tavern and you are you're competing you know there there are fights going on but at the end of the day you know you are all a part of this same community and I mean as you watch this this short over and over it's it's this emotion that kind of builds up um, and I, I think uh, I think um, that's what really sings to me when I watch it. honestly I get to watch it all the time every day <laughs> it's a great short honestly I, I was I so, so pleasantly surprised by it I was I really flabbergasted um, so uh, I'm going to switch this up a little bit. I want to kind of stay away from the mechanic stuff if we don't want to uh, talk about that. But Or is that what you were hoping to talk oh, about? No, I mean, uh, I'm not much of a mechanics guy. I'm more of a content, you sure. know, um, you know, things like Fireside Gatherings, Tavern Rolls. Yeah, so, fair enough. You know, so, talk about no, actually, so this is where I was going with this next question, actually. So Tavern Brawls, uh, we have a lot of these really cool, fun, interesting uh, new ways to play uh, Hearthstone on a on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. um, what is that process like? Coming up with the like the, the these insane, sometimes like really overpowered kind of matchups, right? And what what goes into I that? I think the biggest rule we have when making tavern brawls is to try to surprise players so they don't you know we don't want them to know or expect what's coming next. Um, so we will have some that are yeah very over the top. We have we might have some that are just like one small tweak. Um, we also we're, we're making these you know week after week. Um, so uh, we want a variety of um, complexities too. We're actually we target we want to target the different types of players uh, for Hearthstone. So we will make ones that are like really really hardcore mm -hmm. deck building ones. Uh, we'll make some that are very light deck building ones. Like uh, yeah, the top two, you know, it's a deck building brawl. I don't know if you're familiar with that one, but it's you you make a deck of two cards. Oh, and then you make okay. the yeah, deck yeah. you know fills up. You get 15 copies of each. So it's <laughs> yeah. it's deck building. So. It can be, you know, you might think that it's, you know, for more hardcore players, but it's really easy to make, you know, a two-card deck. Um, or we'll, we'll just have super casual ones, too. Like, just click the button, and we'll give you a character, and we'll give them a character, and, like, you know, just smash it up, or smack, you know, let, you, let each other, let them smash each other up. Um, <laughs> so I think that's kind of it. We just want to make sure that when the next week rolls around, you just don't know what you're going to get. 
Awesome. Anything to add? No, I think that's not right, perfectly perfect. put. Um, just a couple fun ones to end here. What do you think the innkeeper's favorite card or deck is? Oh my gosh. The innkeeper himself. Well, I think the innkeeper himself probably, to speak for Hearth a little bit here, um, will that'll be an ever-changing answer, but he will always like the card that is the most unexpected and is not uh, in any way uh, negative towards his opponent, but rather gets his opponent to try or do something they never thought they would do or expect. Um, and it's you know it's not it's not going to crush him. He's, so, he's so not, not patches. Crushing. What's that? So no not patches. patches. <laughs> no patches for no no patches for Hearth. I think Hearth is the kind of guy that's like, oh, let's see what you do with this. You know, let's see. I'm going to throw this out and see what you. The curveball card. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's probably his favorite type of stuff. All right. Yeah, I would agree. Anything that's, <laughs> that's anti control. You know, he's not yeah. the guy yeah. to just sit there for minutes waiting Fair to just switch. Around. And last question: What is your favorite deck list? My favorite deck list. Deck list. My goodness. Um, or archetype. It's hard. I, I would say Warlock is my favorite class. Um, it's one that early on when we started playing the game and testing and everything and to today, um, I played a little bit of it, uh, of it. I left and went to Mage for a long time. I tried to make Hunter work for me. I'm a Hunter main in WoW, so <laughs> what can I say? I wanted to make that beast deck. But I kept coming back to Warlock, and then ironically, the thing that bugged me the most initially, personally, was the hurting myself for power is uh, it's a chancy <laughs> game, and now it's my favorite thing. So I love uh, Warlock from the pr- perspective of knowing when to quit. <laughs> you know, it's like knowing when to stop hitting that hero power and decide when it's time to just play the cards as they lie. Uh, that, that makes for a fun winning deck that plays that idea. I think is a lot of fun. Totally. So for me, I think I like Rogue. I mean, I like the kind of the fast pace uh, of Rogue, but, you know, going back about a year, um, there was a Rogue uh, Cthulhu deck out there, which was kind of a mix. Like, you know, you have, you know, you have your basic Rogue deck, but you're kind of building up toward this end, this like big finish. And I probably had the most fun with that deck uh, back back then. So, um, you know, I say I like Rogue, but I also just like to have that like, you know, sort of build up for just that massive, you know, demonic finish. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Any final thoughts for uh, the Hearthstone community at large? We can't wait to get the game in your guys' hands, you know, and come December. Uh, in the meantime, keep an eye out for card reveals as they start in the weeks to come. Um, we think it's going to be a lot of fun, and we can't wait to see and hear about your first and latest dungeon run. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been fantastic. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Absolutely.